Hello everyone. This video will determine whether a given equation is an example of an inverse variation or not. Before we go further, please feel free to check out the description below for the link of the other series of topics related to inverse variation. Before we go over this example that we have right here, let's have a review on the basic information on inverse variation. So what is inverse variation? To better understand this type of variation, let's look at variable A and variable B. For inverse variation, if variable A increases, variable B will decrease. Now notice the direction of the arrow. The other one goes up while the other variable goes down. On the other hand, if variable A decreases, then variable B will increase. And again, notice the direction of the arrow. The direction of the arrow goes in opposite direction. And that is what we mean by inverse variation. So whenever we see two variables are inversely proportional with each other, we can say that A varies inversely as B or A is inversely proportional to B. Now let's look at some real life examples of inverse variation. Speed and time are inversely proportional to each other, which means that if a car moves at a faster speed, then it takes less time to get to its destination. On the other hand, if a car moves at a slower speed, then it takes more time to get to the same destination. And that makes speed and time inversely proportional to each other. Now let's look at another example. Number of trees and air pollution on a given area are inversely proportional to each other, which means that if the area has a greater number of trees, or if it has more trees, then it has less pollution. On the other hand, if that same area has less number of trees, then it will have a more probability of getting air pollution. And so again, these two are inversely proportional to each other. Now let's look at another example. Practice and number of mistakes are inversely proportional to each other, which means that the more we practice, the less mistakes we commit. On the other hand, the less we practice, the more mistakes or we get more probability of committing mistakes if we have less practice. So these two are inversely proportional to each other. We also remember that the general equation for an inverse variation is y equals k over x, where our k is called the proportionality constant. So that we can go ahead and say that if we wanted to determine the constant of variation or the proportionality constant k for an inverse variation, we go ahead and we can rearrange this equation as k equals xy. <laughs> Okay, so we go over this first example here. Determine if the given equation is an example of an inverse variation or not. Again, we remember that the general equation for inverse variation is y equals k over x. So in this example, we have a y. It's isolated by itself, which is good. We have a 6 that matches up to our k. And the x is under the k, which is the 6. It's in the denominator. So that we can go ahead and say that this is an example of an inverse variation. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. Now let's move on to the next example. So in this example, we're supposed to determine if the given equation is an example of an inverse variation or not. We have y equals 2x plus 4. Again, we remember that the general equation for an inverse variation is y equals k over x. So in this problem, our y is isolated by itself, which is good. We have the x. Now notice the location of the x. The x is not under the k value or not under a constant. So in this case right here, this is not an example of 
an inverse variation because our x is not in the denominator of the k and we have an extra 4 as well. So then we can go ahead and say that this is not an example of an inverse variation. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. Okay, now let's move on to the next example. At this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own. And when you're done, and pause it and check your answer. Okay, so we go over the problem here. Determine if the given equation is an example of an inverse variation or not. Y equals negative 13x. Now we remember that the general equation for an inverse variation is Y equals K over X. So in this equation that we have here, our Y is isolated by itself, which is good. So that matches, it's by itself. Then that is equal to K over X. Now please notice that our X for Inverse variation should be in the denominator of the constant k. In this example, y equals negative 13x. Our x is not in the denominator of negative 13. And that tells us that this is not an example of an inverse variation. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. Did you get the same answer as this? Yeah! Good. Perfect. Now let's move on to the next example. At this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own. And when you're done, unpause it and check your answer. Okay, so we go over the problem here. Determine if the given equation is an example of inverse variation or not. That is x, y equals negative 5. Again, we remember that the general equation for inverse variation is y equals k over x. In this problem that we have here, our y is not isolated by itself. So we go ahead and isolate y by itself by dividing both sides by x. I'm going to divide this by x. So if we divide x to both sides, we can cross this out. So we are left with y equals negative 5 over x. So this is the equivalent equation of xy equals negative 5. So if you notice, our y is by itself, and which is good. And then we also have a negative 5 that matches up to our k. And our x is in the denominator of negative 5. This tells us that this is an example of an inverse variation. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. Did you get the same answer as this? Good. Perfect. If you find this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya.